Ecosystem Interactions. In this lesson, we'll look at the science and engineering practices of developing and using models, analyzing and interpreting data, constructing explanations and designing solutions, engaging in argument from evidence, and obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Our cross-cutting concepts will include cause and effect, systems and system models, as well as stability and change. Populations. Ecologists organize the biosphere into various different levels. Recall the biosphere is all of the living organisms all the way down into our planet and floating around up in our atmosphere that exist on our planet. A population is a group of individuals of the same species in a given area at any one time. Grant's zebra are found in Southeast Africa. Although they are the same species, those found in Ethiopia are regarded as a different population to those found much further south in Tanzania. Communities. A community is made up of all of the different populations of species in an area. This rainforest community contains trees, forest floor plants, insects, fish, birds, monkeys. All of these are part of the community. Ecosystems. An ecosystem is all the communities in the area, plus any non-living factors that they interact with. So what are some non-living factors that you can see in this image? Some of them may include minerals in the soil, water, sunlight, oxygen, and even carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Interacting with non-living things. Non-living factors are essential for the survival of organisms. They are known as abiotic factors. Examples include heat, light and water, carbon dioxide, minerals, soil, and oxygen. If an organism cannot access the resources it needs, its growth and reproduction will be limited. Interacting with living things. Organisms also interact with other living things. These interactions are known as biotic factors. Biotic factors help organisms to obtain food from plants or other animals, to gain shelter, and to find mates for reproduction. So what interactions will this beaver have with other living things? The beaver uses trees to build a shelter, it eats trees and plants, and it will need a mate for reproduction. Competition. Individuals or populations in an ecosystem have similar needs. When there are more individuals than there are resources, this leads to competition. The individuals will need to compete for resources in order to survive. Competition can occur between members of the same species and between members of different species. Here we see an eastern, sea, uh, an eastern bluebird in competition with another eastern bluebird for some type of food resource. Competition between animals. What main resources do animals compete for? One, they definitely compete for food. They also compete for water. There's direct competition for mates and also shelter. Competition between plants. Competition between plants may be less noticeable than competition between animals, but it still takes place. So what main resources do plants compete for? First and foremost, they compete for light. They also compete for water minerals, and space.
looking more in depth at this idea of competition, which group competes for each resource? Space and land. Both plants and animals are going to compete for space and land. For mates. Could be animals only. If we were talking about reproduction in general, it may also occur with plants. Soil minerals. Plants or food resources. Animals. Light. It's going to be plants. And water. Both plants and animals. Population growth. The size of populations in an ecosystem is constantly changing. A population will increase when a new individual is born or an organism immigrates or joins the population. A population can decrease when individuals die or individuals emigrate. That is that they leave the population, maybe to find resources in another area. Factors affecting population. Abiotic and biotic factors impact rates of birth and death, as well as immigration and emigration. Factors that affect populations include competition and the availability of food, water, and shelter. Are these biotic or abiotic factors? When resources are readily available, the population will increase. If resources are in short supply, the population size will decrease. So let's explore, explore some interactions in a given ecosystem. The growth, growth of grass in a meadow is affected by light, water, shade, and also by predator species. In this case, we'll just look at sheep. If our average amount of sunlight increases with regard to the grass in the meadow, we are going to have above average growth. If that same variable decreases, we are going to have below average growth. If our amount of water increases, We'll have above average growth. If it decreases, we will have below average growth. The amount of shade. If the amount of shade increases, then we will have below average growth in the meadow. If the amount of shade decreases, we will have above average growth. And the same thing with predators, the larger the number of predators, the decrease in the amount of grass growth. If we have fewer predators, we will have an increase in, grass, in the grass growth. These variables can interact with one another in varying degrees. If we have high amounts of sunlight and high amounts of water, low shade and low predators, in this instance, we may have a very lush meadow, extremely high growth, growth rates. Whereas if we go the opposite direction with each of these, low water, low sunlight, high shade, and a large number of predators, there may not be any grass in the meadow at all. Effects of competition. Competition between members of the same species or a resource generally has a stabilizing effect on a population. The bigger the population, the more competition there is. The increase in competition causes the population to fall, resulting in less competition again. And so the cycle continues. With more competition, leads to populations falling. Therefore, there is less competition, which causes the population to rise again.
So let's look at some examples of interactions between populations of organisms and an abiotic factor. These graphs show the great blue Huron population and precipitation for an ecosystem over time. Notice the great blue Huron population stays relatively stable for a long period of time before drastically dropping off. When we overlay a precipitation graph, we notice that we have population that's, uh, the population is remaining stable at the same time the precipitation remains stable. When the precipitation decreases, the population also decreases. A possible cause for the sudden drop in heron population is the influence of a fall in precipitation. This could reduce the population of frogs and fish if ponds and lakes dried up. This is the heron's prey. Therefore, they would have less access to food, influencing their population numbers. The yearly fluctuations in population could be due to competition or yearly changes in prey populations. Disruptions to ecosystems. Ecosystems are extremely dynamic. They are changing all the time. A disruption to an ecosystem, such as the introduction of a new organism, a change in temperature, or a change in availability of a resource can lead to changes in population. These changes could include population numbers, extinction, or migration. Remember, population number is the number of individuals. Extinction is when a population of organisms dies out. And migration is when organisms are more suited to a new environment, and so they may move in or move out depending upon where that environment is and if it is feasible for them to get there. Abiotic disruptions activity. A lake in a mountain ecosystem dries up due to a change in temperature. What types of changes would you expect to see in that environment? Think about populations that might live in the lake, populations that eat organisms in the lake, and populations that rely on the lake for water. Take a little time to process some of the changes that you think may take place if this lake was to completely dry up. Biotic disruptions. If a biotic factor is disrupted or removed, it can also lead to significant shifts in ecosystems. In this food web, what do you think would happen to the aphid and weasel population if mice were removed from that ecosystem? So here are our mice. The weasel is depending upon them for food. If they're removed, the weasel may not have enough food source. Notice there's not really anything else in this food web that that weasel is consuming. The weasel may have to migrate out of the environment in order to find food. Also, if the mouse population is gone, the plant population may increase. This may lead to an increase in the number of aphids. More plant availability may lead to more food available to the aphid. In this food web, which organisms would be affected if phytoplankton died out? Here's our phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are the producers in this environment. They are the source of matter and energy for all of the other organisms. So this whole community would be affected if the phytoplankton died out. 